Hi everyone, my name is John. In this tutorial, what we're going to do is learn how to use a custom domain name with Gmail to send and receive emails using your custom domain. There's a lot of paid options out there where you can pay Namecheap or other email server providers a bunch of money every single year to send and receive emails from your custom domain. But we're going to bypass all of this. And the only thing that we need in order to make this to work is a Namecheap domain. And don't worry if you don't already have one. And also a Google account. So a Google account typically that has access to Gmail. The Google account that I'm going to be using for this tutorial is wirewebsite at gmail.com. Throughout this tutorial, just remember that you're going to be using your own Gmail account and I'll provide instructions as we go through this guide on how to do that. So if you have a Gmail account and you have a domain under Namecheap, we're going to learn how we can send and receive emails using that custom domain name. If you don't already have a Namecheap domain, you can purchase one using the link I include in the video description below. It helps me out a lot if you use that link, but if not, you can also go to Namecheap.com and start to go through the checkout process to purchase that domain there as well. Once you've purchased your domain, go ahead and log in to your Namecheap account and go to your domain list on the left-hand side. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using my wire.work example domain, but you can use whatever domain that you'd like as we go through this process. The first thing to do is once you have your domain within the domain list is to click on manage. In this setting, you're going to scroll down and you're going to go to the redirect email section and click on the button that says add forwarder. So the alias is the first half of the email where you want to send and receive mail. So as an example, if I wanted my email address to send and receive to be john at wire.work, I would only enter john in this section. This is my alias. And I'm going to forward this alias to my Gmail account that I've already created, wirewebsite at gmail.com. I'm going to click on Save Changes. And now, whenever someone emails john at wire.work, it's automatically going to send an email to wirewebsite at gmail.com. So let's test this out. What I have here is an email so I'm going to write an email to john at wire.work. I'm going to say this is a test email with test content. And then I'm going to send this email. And now if I go into my Google account and then I go into Gmail, I should see that email arrive very shortly. And here it is. This is the test email that I just sent from my other email account. So we're able to receive email from the Namecheap domain that we set up, but how do we send email from that domain? So the first thing we're going to do is log into Gmail and then go into our Gmail settings. So we're going to click on the settings icon and then click on see all settings and then click on accounts and import. Click on the button that says add another email address under send mail as, and it'll bring up this pop-up right here. So the first page, we wanna enter the name that we're going to be able to send and receive emails as. This is going to be seen by other people that you converse with over email, so make sure that it's something professional and something that you'd want other users to see when you send them an email. For this one, I'm going to say John from Wire, and then for the email address, enter the email address that you're going to send and receive emails from. So knowing that we entered John as our alias and Namecheap, I'm going to put John at my domain name right here, John at wire.work. Obviously your domain name is going to go here with whatever alias that you entered in the domain settings for Namecheap. Make sure that treat as an alias is unchecked and then click on next step. For this section, we're going to delete the content in the SMTP server, and we're going to enter smt, smtp.gmail.com. And for the username, we're going to enter our Google account username and password. 
So since I am logged in to wire website, I'm going to enter wire website right here. And now I'm going to enter my Google account password in this field right here. Then I'm going to click on add account. And then it will take me to a section where it will ask me to confirm a verification and add my email address. If you don't get to this page, but you have an error message on the prior page, it might look something like this. If you have this message that says authentication failed, please check your username and password and less secure apps for wire website or whatever your username is for your Gmail account. What you can do is go into your Google account settings by clicking on manage your Google account. And then on the left hand side, click on security and scroll all the way to the bottom where it says less secure app access. Make sure that less secure app access is turned on. If less secure app access is turned on and you go through this process again of adding that email address and it still gives you an error, you're going to go to this website right here. It's accounts.google.com slash display unlock captcha. If you don't remember this, I'll include a link in the description below. Once you navigate to this website, it's going to ask you to allow access to your Google account. If you click on continue, it'll then take you to a page that says account access enabled. And now you'll be able to go back into the settings for your Gmail account and click on the add another email address button and go through the process that we just went through while entering the same information. Sometimes Google wants to make sure that when you're adding a send mail uh, email address that you're doing it correctly and you're doing it securely. So they have these settings in place to protect users that may not know what they're doing. We do know what we're doing and we do want to use the SMTP server for Gmail since it's owned by Google. So that's why we're going through this process and that's why we've turned those two settings on and off. So if you've gone through this process and you're still getting an error, leave a comment below and I'll help troubleshoot for you. Once we have the send mail as entered here, it's going to say unverified until we enter a code that we've received within our inbox. So if I go to my inbox right now, I'm going to have a brand new email that's just arrived and it's going to say Gmail confirmation, send mail as whatever I want my alias from my domain name to be. This is the confirmation code. So I'm going to copy this code, go back into settings, see all settings, go back to accounts and import, and then click on the verify button. Now I'm going to paste the code that I've just copied and click on verify. And now you'll notice that I have a completely new send mail as email address right here, which is going to be really convenient when I compose a new email because I can use the drop down here to select my brand new John from wire email address using my custom Namecheap domain. If you want this to automatically select the brand new email address that you just added, you can go into your settings once again and make this brand new email address your default. So if I click on the button that says make default, now when I compose a new message, it's going to automatically select my brand new custom email address as the one that I send and receive emails from. Keep in mind that you're still going to be able to receive emails from both of these email addresses within your Gmail account but how you send emails from your account is going to depend on what account you select from the dropdown here. If at any point in time you want to remove this account or you want to edit some information like the name that you're sending emails as, you can click on the button that says edit info next to the alias, or excuse me, next from the email address that you've added. And then just make sure you go through the next steps. Keep these details the same while entering your same password for your Gmail account and click on save changes. If you have two-factor authentication enabled for your account, you're going to have to go through a separate process which is allowing individual app access. That's a little bit of a different process and I'll link a guide below to walk you through those steps. I hope this helped and if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. Make sure that you've gone through and watched the entire video, including the troubleshooting steps if you're running into errors. And I really hope that this helped and enjoy the rest of your day.